said for us advocates for reasonable regulations don't get hung up, hung up on the Second Amendment. Right. But isn't that what the NRA, isn't that their position, the Second Amendment, the Second Amendment? The Second yeah, but why, but why, look. So you, you're taking my rights. Look. You say it's a privilege? No, no, no. I'm saying this. If you walked into a room with a bunch of gun nuts, mm -hmm. and you were going to give, uh, you were going to, as we used to say in the 60s, you were going to give the line on gun control, okay? I wouldn't mention, in terms of what you're doing, I wouldn't mention the Second Amendment. Now, it would come up because, yeah. some, fine, okay, fine, let it come up. But why start your discussion off by playing their card? Well, I wouldn't. I never do. No, but most people up. do. I, yeah, and, yeah, and by the way, no, and by the way, when it comes the up. The politicians do. I respect right. the Second Amendment. Right, they all do. Listen, listen, listen. I, listen. I don't think the bomber ever talked about guns without first saying, now I respect the second man, everybody knew he was lying. <laughs> I mean, that, you know, that, that, that's the way it is. But, no, the only point I'm making is that you can't hinge a whole discussion on something called Second Amendment rights. And I'll tell you why you can't. Because there are no rights. Uh, I shouldn't say that. There are no unlimited rights. Yeah. See, okay? we, there we, are get no, that. we get that. No, I know. <laughs> but you want to know something? But you want to say if the other side doesn't get it, too goddamn so bad. Oh, she mentioned something. <laughs> goddamn okay? bad. But the point is, if they say to you, well, I have a right, no, you don't have a right. I'm you know, sorry. We, and try, if they yeah, wanna, we try that one. It doesn't go very far. Well, you know something? <laughs> Sometimes you got to try things. Yeah. You just have to keep saying it, whether it goes far or not. Okay? It's very frustrating I mean, because people say, we're not going to have an emotionally charged argument right now. We're not going to have a fact-based argument right had, now either. Had, so what is it? I, once went, I was once in front of a group, right? right. And they started carrying on about the Constitution. They didn't know the Constitution from a hole in the head. And I said to them, I said, tell me, folks, of the 56 people who came to Philadelphia to write the Constitution, how many of them were lawyers? Oh, only a couple. They were all gentlemen farmers. I said, of the 56 who showed up, 53 were lawyers. It's a legal document. And what laws do is they limit things. They don't say, do whatever you want. Okay? And, and, and I never let the conversation on the Second Amendment get past that. I'm not going to get into some stupid thing of a, I have a God-given right. You want to have a God-given right, move to Iran. It's very offensive to say yeah, God-given right. I know, but, it's very but, you know, remember, listen, I once had, a, I once had breakfast with, uh, with uh, Clarence Jones, who is a retired, he's emeritus professor of law at Stanford. He was Martin Luther King's personal attorney, and he wrote the I Have a Dream speech for Dr. King. And he said to me, he said, you know, Dr. King would always say that they, you know, you get in a conversation with somebody about race, and it's clear that they're a racist. He says, but don't just, you know, he says, they're also a family man, a home, you know, you've got to understand that people say things all the time, often with the greatest degree of, you know, you know, who haven't spent one goddamn second asking themselves what it is that they're really saying. This is a big problem with this issue. Look, if you get one word, let me let me just if you if you take one word from my yes. appearance today okay. about guns, the word is impulse. Everything related to guns is impulse. The guy who comes in to my do, do you want a gun? Okay. So you can't imagine, I'm I'm pretty serious, walking into a gun shop and spend the same amount of time deciding what gun you're going to buy that somebody des decides deciding what lo lottery ticket to buy at the mini mart that morning and yet that's how guns are bought okay people just walk in my shop uh, i'm not doing retail anymore but I, I stopped 2014 my shop is a mile from a walmart i would be there uh, i wasn't there often i was always traveling Door opens, guy, 50, 60 years old, comes in and as he walks in the door, he looks at his watch. That means he dropped the wife off at Walmart 
It's always the wife, right? And he says, what time should I come back? Get back? Just, Huey, go up to the gun shop. So he's got an hour, right? Comes up to the gun shop. Now, if he's got three, four hundred bucks in his pocket, three, four hundred dollars is what I pay for dinner in New York now. It's no money, okay? So he's got a few hundred bucks, and he, I'll take that one. It's pure impulse. There's no, well, I need this car. That's all bullshit. I mean, the industry would like you to think that this is great. You know, I need this kind of gun. No, I'll take that one. Okay, fine. And by the way, if the gun he wants, I don't have, and I have to order it from a supplier. When I get that gun in and I call his house and the wife answers the phone, which she always does, I better not say I'm calling from the gun shop. Because if I do, Huey, did you buy another friggin' gun? Okay, so uh, uh, this is Mike, I'm a friend of his. Okay, so that's pure impulse. The decision to use a gun in anger is pure impulse. Virtually every single shooting is an argument between people who know each other, and then all of a sudden it goes and it goes and it goes, fuck you, bang. This is gun violence in this country. It's pure impulse. So you think that's any different from the impulse of the guy who says, oh, I got my Second Amendment rights. <laughs> it's a totally impulsive world, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. and, and you need to always keep that in mind in terms of any conversation that you have, that you're not dealing with some rational, slow, careful decision-making process. No, you're dealing with, that's it. That's it. Now, I'm not saying this to you because I have a brilliant script you can use. Don't get me wrong. Okay, I had a guy came in and said, this is about 10 years ago, I was spending more time in the shop then. He was filling out the form. He was an older guy, you know, the, the background check form. So he's having trouble filling it out because he couldn't read and write that well. Why? Factory guy, right? He's working in a factory because he can't read and write. Fine. He's filling out the form, and by the time he gets to the fourth line, he's getting pissed off. Now that fucking Kennedy, even though Kennedy had nothing to do with God, but liberal, Democrat, that fucking Kennedy. So I was kind of in a raunchy mood that day, and I stopped him, I said to him, hey, listen, let me ask you a question. I says, if you had two brothers who were both shot to death with legally owned guns, don't you think you'd be in favor of gun control? And the guy stepped back from me, he said, you know, he said, nobody ever said that to me. Well, why don't people say that to the senators? It's, listen, you want impulse? Listen to the conversations in Washington. Oh, come on. They work for us. Mm -hmm. That's, they work for us. They work for the NRA. So their impulse is to say that's now. Where I think you know, the guy who was shot at the baseball game and they said, oh, now we all need to bring bundles to our games. Yeah. Baseball games. Like, how often has someone actually defended themselves against? No, it, 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 again, again, it's, it's a very irrational, you know, and there have been brilliant books written Wait, about this, you, you know, on, on people thinking that they're making a rational, reasoned decision when actually they're just using whatever emotional thing happens at that moment, and so they say... So what's That's the NRA's problem. message now? You said it had changed when you joined. What's yeah, the message, message now? now is that everybody should have a gun on their person because you never know when that crazy whatever is going to come up to you in the middle of the street and steal your money or steal blah, 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 blah. Well, it and is they do a lot of fear. You have to fear the government. The government might. Right, right. It's take, all part of it. It's all yeah. part of it. It's all, but again, I, listen, every opinion poll, and I've seen them all, okay, says that when they ask people what is the one, if you're, a, if you're willing to be a single issue voter, what is the issue that will determine how you vote, and the gun issue always ends up dead last. Right. Oh. And the reason that the NRA is important yeah. is because most of the membership has other similar social views. They're, you know, they're conservative, they're Republican, blah, blah, blah. And the NRA does a phenomenal job of care and feeding of their membership. Well, they really do. Then don't we need, okay. on the opposing side, need one organization? Well, that's a big problem that we don't have one organization, that everybody's problem. competing with everybody else. Right. But the bigger issue is, again, the fact, listen, I'm a member of the Wildlife Society. I, 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 okay. I'm, a, I'm, I'm a member of two or three of the environmental. Do you know how often I hear from them? Never. 
Once a year, I get the goddamn calendar with the picture of the birds on it. Send us 30 bucks. That's it. I hear from the NRA every day. And the NRA message, that by the way, is a very that does you fires up the right. base. And the, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the message is very seductive. The message is because you are a gun owner, gun owner you are a special kind of person that the, them don't understand. Well, That's remarkably right. But they're also playing on the idea of a kind of a unifying thing that we all share. That if you don't own a gun, you don't understand us. Okay? That's, you know, I mean, you talk about brilliant branding, okay? And they've been doing it for a hundred and, you know, I mean, from, okay? So here you have, listen, there was no gun violence prevention movement until Sandy Hook, okay? There were a couple of organizations in Washington that did lobbying. There was no moms, there was no nothing, okay? There was certainly no membership organizations. Mm -hmm. I am, and by the way, after Sandy, I said to myself, one year it'll die down. One year it'll be finished. I was astonished that it didn't. I couldn't believe the degree to which things just kept bubbling along, okay? And what they've done this time with, with what happened in Florida, they've gotten it together in terms of social media. That's mm -hmm. what they've done. Mm -hmm. And that's what the NRA is having a problem and with. And it's the kids, okay. too. Right. The kids and you don't screw with kids. Exactly. Yeah. You don't screw with the kids.